All right, so we spent some time talking about different kinds of videos. That's going to be the biggest challenge. This next thing, talking about setting up the channel and all of that, that's not the hard part. It's relatively straightforward, even the other things like cards and all of that. It's creating the video. So let's spend a little bit of time talking about setting up the, the channel. So I'm going to go ahead and open up a web browser. And um, the thing is that we can attach a YouTube channel. Uh, we can create multiple YouTube channels, and we can attach them to multiple Google Plus pages, for example. So I feel maybe the best way to do this, like I have in my instructions, is we'll log into Google Plus, and then after that, then we'll attach a channel to it. Because we would want the two anyway. We would want the YouTube channel, and we want Google Plus to promote it, or uh, or Twitter and such. So take a moment to go back to plus.google.com and sign into your Google Plus account. So sign into Google Plus. Now on Google Plus, remember, you can have the personal account or the business account. And you can have a, uh, a YouTube channel for one or the other or both. But what you want to check is to most likely, after you sign in, click on the top right corner to switch between your personal profile over to your business account. So it will probably be listed here because you've got your personal profile and we created the business page should probably be listed there. You just want to click on it to select it. It'll switch you over to, to that other account. And once you've signed in, and then on the top right corner, you have uh, the Google Apps icon. Uh, click on that. And here you can jump to the different uh, to the different sites. So you can just go to YouTube, so youtube.com. So I'm signed in with my account and I'm on YouTube and basically YouTube you can use it in two big different ways either as uh, a consumer or a creator. And most of us use YouTube as a consumer. I go here, I watch one video about Star Wars, and 10 videos later, I watch another video about Star Wars. So that's the consumer aspect of YouTube. But as a creator, we are able to create these YouTube videos and upload them and monetize them and all of that. So I'm, um, I'm on YouTube, but if you click on the top right corner, um, you should have something that says Creator Studio. Click on Creator Studio. So you click on your icon up there, Creator Studio, and then it'll be telling me, you must create a channel to upload videos. Okay, that's a, that's a process we need to do here. So go ahead and click Create a Channel. Use YouTube as, and then it'll say, it'll ask for a name. Uh, you can change that name. Um, or we have use a business or other name. Most likely you've already got your business set up right here that it's asking you. So for me, I'm just going to do it slightly differently so that I create a different channel. Um, let's say DMC test. So yours may look like mine or not. Go ahead, after you put in your name, click Next. Okay. So let's see. Um, just proceed from that. And that should take me back, hopefully, here. No videos found. So did everyone get a screen that's something like this? How would you do around the time? We'll just go back up to the address youtube.com and then, and, then, uh, and then click to sign in and sign in with the same login info that you had for the Google Plus.
question. <coughs> yeah, I got my Google page made. I never added the location though However, when I go to the um, Google Plus and I click on my, my face, mm -hmm. I hit the drop down, I see only my Google profile. I don't see no reference to like the Google business page or anything. Yeah, I don't know. If you don't see that, instead try going first to business.google.com and see yeah, if that's it's. That's where I'm at now, and then when I do that, yeah, it shows my business page. Which is funny because it, it sounds as if if there's a one that you can see it unless I have a location. Oh, let me take a quick look at that. It shouldn't. It shouldn't matter with YouTube about our location. Well, no, I'm talking about just my business page. Because we have location and we have brand <clears throat> Yeah, I, I have one, but it's funny, like, I felt like I was never really able to successfully build it all the way through just because I skipped the location part, and I'm showing up as unverified. I don't know if it's because I don't have a location. Mm -hmm. that's, that's the answer to your question. I got it. Well, um, this is going to get the, um, there should be, I can tell you where it's at, there is a screen here that it's in my image.
now when you want to use it yourself, you just need to be switched back and forth between your and your other action. Right. Do you need your channel the same name as your business property? That's a good. That's a good idea to keep that link up. Do you want to try to add this? Do you go back to the history? Okay, no problem. What we can do here now is go and click on the person on on there. Let's go to your screen. Something like this. So this first time might be a bit of a setup, but uh, just to show you, some of you needed to see this and some of you not. Um, up on the uh, up on your icon to switch accounts, you have the gear. And again, most of you, I showed this, but if if you need to, you can go back to that gear, and here's where you will see. Show me all my channels or create a new channel. So if you need to go back to that to create more channels, there it is in the gear. We're in the Creator Studio, and most likely you're under Video Manager. No videos. So we can't do very much with the account without any sort of video. Um, we will uh, upload a video in a moment, but what I want to look at is go back to uh, Creator Studio to put it uh, channel okay under channel on the left navigation bar here so now that we're a content creator we have to remember we've got the creator studio a regular consumer of YouTube doesn't have that we have this the creator studio area where we can upload our videos see our statistics deal with comments and all of that and what I want to look at here under creator studio under under channel is a, is a bunch of different settings. We'll look at some of these settings because under the first setting of status and, status and features uh, we have all of these possible features that may or may not be active until you verify. And verify is super easy. You basically click it, I think it might ask you one or two more things, and then you're verified. Now you're not going to get the kind of verification like CNET.com or you know Justin Bieber or that sort of thing. That's not that kind of verification. This is just to verify you're a real person, that you are going to use YouTube, you're not a spam bot. And if you go through this verification, what it'll let you do is, for example, here, monetize. That's how you make money off of YouTube. Mine is off because I haven't verified, because I haven't selected my country. And I'm not going to go through this process, but this is where you activate to be able to make money off of YouTube. It's a few questions. And then at some place also it might ask you about your bank account and such so that then you can get your money, so you can get paid from making money off of YouTube. At the minimum, I mean at the moment, the maximum amount of length of videos, um, 15 minutes. Now, I might not be making videos that long, but if I need to, I'm limited at the moment, I have to enable it. Obviously that's not difficult. Some of these other ones, like external annotations, custom thumbnails. I want custom thumbnails because what YouTube will do is it'll give me one of three random pictures to display on my on my video. You know, when we see all of these uh, videos on YouTube with these amazing thumbnails that makes me want to click, you know, like all of these right here, a lot of times these are thumbnails that someone crafted, that someone designed in <laughs> Photoshop, or, or whatever graphic software to catch your attention like this you know to catch your attention to see the video at the default it's not going to let me do a custom thumbnail until I verify my account and again it's a pretty easy process to verify um, 
you want to look at the thumbnails of the different videos that you've liked to see, you know, I can make that kind of thumbnail. I can be creative and and uh, catch people's attention. External annotations, don't worry about that one just yet. Paid content. So again, another way for me to make money off of YouTube is via paid content. It's not active because I haven't verified. Um, you can learn more if you read about it. Content idea appeals. This is basically if I'm trying to use video, if I'm trying to use video or audio that I don't own, YouTube will recognize that so fast and say, this is the DuckTales theme, you can't use it. And so if you want to fight these, uh, you know, these demerits, at the moment I can't because I won't verify my account. For a real world example, uh, for the one of the clients that we have, Texcoco, uh, you know, we had the Travel Channel record an episode of the restaurant, and then we had the authorization from Travel Channel to upload it to our uh, client's YouTube. But then right away, YouTube said, you're using copyrighted material, and they shut the video down. Well, because we had content uh, idea appeals, we could fill out a little form and said, we have authorization to use this content. Here is the proof. They say, okay, great, and the video is back online. So if you ever get shut down, your videos get shut down, you can try to appeal it. What else? Unlisted and private videos. That, that's self-explanatory pretty much. Live streaming. This is something pretty new. Within the last year, maybe, year and a half, YouTube added the ability for you to do live video broadcasts. YouTube has always been about record a video, edit it, upload it. But now if you set this up for free, you'll be able to plug in a camera and have like a live video event that it records and stores for you, that people can chat live at the same time. So think about that in your business. Let's say Victor's Bakery. I've been promoting on Google Plus and Twitter that next week we're going to do a live demonstration in the kitchen. Don't forget, 8 p.m you know, 8, 8 p.m. Pacific time, and we keep promoting it, promoting it, and then we do a live video, we set up a camera, we do that on YouTube, they host it, they run it, it's all free, and then I get more traffic, more views, and subscribers, and all of that. I have a basic video editor, and I can do fan funding. I can activate this to get donations and such for me to create YouTube videos. Uh, you know, I'll have a button there where people can uh, give me money, uh, pay me to keep con uh, keep making great YouTube content. So here's various things under status and features. Pretty self-explanatory, but it's all related to verify. Any questions on this screen? Let's jump over to upload defaults. This is a very useful screen because every video that we upload should have some effort in SEO. YouTube itself is a big old search engine and people are searching for stuff here obviously. So if I am always updating or uploading certain kinds of videos, why not set my upload defaults? For example, I can upload videos that are public, unlisted, or private. Public obviously is that all my videos will be able to be found by anyone searching on YouTube. Unlisted is, they will exist on YouTube, but they will not be findable on YouTube, but if someone has the link to that video, they can see the video. So think about uploading a video that is special, that the only way someone can see it is via subscribing to your newsletter. So you then share that link to that video on the email newsletter, and they can see the video, but no one else can find the video on YouTube unless they have the link. And private is private. Basically, you can see it or those that you approve. You can set this up so that uh, people that you put on the whitelist can see the video. And YouTube has an aspect where you can do paid content. Uh, there's some requirements. I believe you need at least 1,000 subscribers to have that activated. Then you'll be able to charge people to start to watch your YouTube videos something to strive for. 
There's a few categories here to choose from. Maybe I'm always uploading tech how-to videos, or I'm uploading gaming videos, or music videos, or technology videos, or whatever. Um, I don't see anything about web design, per se, so I might put it under tech. I might put it under education, maybe, or how-to. This uh, standard license, um, basically the most liberal version of the license is the Creative Commons. That's like, here's my video, do whatever you want with it, mix it, you know, remix it, mash it up, do whatever you want. I'm cool, do whatever you want with my video. That's Creative Commons. Standard YouTube license has some um, protections that uh, if someone downloads and alters your video, you can use YouTube to have them take the video down. So some more protection for your content. You can decide what you want there, uh, a more you know conservative uh, license or a more liberal one, and there's no wrong answer. It's how you want your content online. Maybe on your videos, you're always using the same sort of uh, title. Maybe you're, you're doing a bunch of how-to videos. I'm going to get tired of writing how-to. So what if I have it automatically always say how-to something, and then I can add the rest? On this description, well, you might think that's not too useful to have a default because I'm always going to make a different kind of video. Sure, but what you can do, you can automatically add things that you will always have here. Bakersbakery.com slash YouTube promo. What if you're always having certain links or certain text in your description? You can put it there. And then later on, your other content. What about tags and keywords? What if I'm always doing um, a bunch of you know WordPress types of videos or uh, tutorial, or whatever keywords or hashtags or whatever? I can add those there. The thing about YouTube is uh, popularity breeds popularity, even negative popularity. But what I would recommend is to change this setting right here. You have either don't let people comment on my video or let people comment on my video. I would recommend leave, let people comment, but I would say here until I approve them. Because this is how, you know, you probably noticed that YouTube comments can devolve very quickly into shouting matches and, and anger and all that bad stuff. So if you set this to approved, you will get a notification and over on the community screen, you will be able to approve a comment, delete a comment, mark it as a spam comment and such. And I recommend that. You can obviously run this however you want, but if you want to keep it nice and on topic, I would recommend to approve comments. Don't turn them off because then you know people can't uh, be social and uh, help you get more views and such. So I would say let those get approved. Do you want people to give you thumbs up and thumbs down? You know, I can't take, my, my delicate heart can't take it, so I'll turn it off. And I would recommend leave it on. Um, yeah, you might get some negative comments or negative thumbs down, but it's not as bad as getting negative comments. What's the default language of your videos? You can change that, or one of 180 languages. Sub subtitle contributions. You can let other people help you write closed captions for your videos if you want. Um, that's useful because let's say you've got a you you've got a tutorial video and it's doing really well and someone can help you caption it to reach more people. You can turn that on. It's off by default and you can approve these things of course but if you want people to help you with that you can turn it on. If you use captions, you have to select what sort of caption certification, and probably you're going to select this content has never aired on television. Of course not. I live in the future, and it's on YouTube. Or you can change that if it does exist on other media. Suggest video improvements. YouTube has some basic image st stabilization and color correction and such. And if it detects a shaky video, it'll say, why not activate that improvement? I don't quite like them. I've never really liked the results of that. I don't know if they've improved their algorithm, but I never use it. 
so it bothers me and I always have that on don't even show me that um, so you can decide what you want but maybe they've improved the algorithm and the shakiness is removed easier so this question goes back a little bit over here to you Joey over here about can you target a location you can set a location of the video which might be a way for you to get found you know, if I'm putting in a zip code, 92154, search, it's going to say, okay. You know, you can set it to a particular location, mm -hmm. and that might help your video get found by those people in that area. You, all of these things we can do on a case-by-case -case basis, but I'm showing you here on the defaults because this can help you save time if you're always uploading things with certain features. Would you like people to see the statistics of your views and all of that? Yes or no? So you can turn that on or off. And if you change anything here, remember to go back to the top right and select Save. Any questions on this screen? Yes. Yes. Uh, the difference between the caption certification option. <clears throat> this has to do with if you are showing a video on YouTube that has previously existed on some other medium. Like I've got here, this content is only aired on television in the US without captions. So this video, we showed it as a commercial on Fox. And now we're also showing it on our YouTube. So we're saying here, our YouTube version has captions, and the original one didn't have captions when it aired on TV. So for most people, the, the one about it's never aired on the U.S. Will, will work. And for some people, some of these will, will, pay, will, work, will mean more to you. Uh, so perhaps uh, during break and such, you can see about your particular videos, which works best. But for most of us, it's going to be the first one. It's got something to do with the laws, laws and something like that. Yes, because uh, this is also content. Someone owns, you know, all of this intellectual content someone owns, someone owns it. So even the text that's attached to a video, someone might own it. Let's say you recorded the video, but you hired someone to write the captions. Do you own it or does the caption company own it? Well, you have to read the contract. So right here it's trying to say, if you're uploading this video and it has captions, do you have the right to those captions? Let's say I made a, a video, commercial video, it was aired on, on local channel. Local channel. Mm -hmm. And uh, what, what you are showing is the second option. Assign it on television with the use without captions. That might be. It's my production, it's my work, but well, it, it was transmitted on TV station. Um, did it have captions when it was on TV? No. Most likely it'll be that one then. It was on TV, but it didn't have captions. So that's what probably will work for you. But there's not any kind of law that uh, you need to get captions in order to go to on, on air on TV station? I'm not so sure about that. Um, this might be an example where I might go over to the YouTube help you know, over on the help system down here, bottom right, there might be a better answer for you than I can give you over on help. Or there might be a way uh, in here somewhere about sending an email to get answers for your particular uh, issue. Mm -hmm. Let's see here, take a quick look at featured content. There's nothing much to do here until we've got a video. But what we can do is set featured video or playlist or channel ad. Let's say someone visits my YouTube channel. I want to always show a particular video. I want to really promote one. And it does work because let me show you an example here of one of these YouTube channels that I have. So on the side I'm doing these sort of financial investing videos and I've got this one that is the featured video that it's got the most views of all of them because when someone visits this channel, right away they see it, they're interested perhaps, they watch it, and that one has been viewed the most times. 
Now we can't do anything on this screen yet because we don't have any videos. But once you have a video, you'll be able to feature it, so it's the first thing people see. Same thing with channel ad. Choose a video uh, that is going to be the one that's going to be promoted most to people. Like that one I've got about the virtual boy. When people watch my other videos, it's always going to suggest watch the virtual boy video also. So these, I can switch them out, but I can't really select multiple ones at once. For this month, maybe, I'm going to use this channel ad. <coughs> and for another month, I'll use another one. But I can't select more than one at the same time for these. And again, I don't have any videos, so I can't really do much here. That's featured content. Any questions on this screen? Branding. This is the screen that I was saying about that little watermark. They also call it a bug. You can see it on this particular video here for this channel. Hey! After the ad, of course. Um, I'm Josh Altman, and because I'm the realtor for Mega. So you're watching this video about um, uh, top five tips for beginning investors, and look at this. Right here. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of the VMC Inc. Financial that News Network. Is I'm what this Campos. screen is about. So we're um, branding, a, a channel branding element to overlay on your videos. And it's telling you here, try to make a simple black and white graphic with transparency, save it, and then all of your videos will have this watermark. Well, you might think, well, what's the point? I'm watching the video and I'm seeing the watermark and the channel people can share a video and it can end up on YouTube, it can end up on someone's blog, on Twitter, but then it's gonna have always that watermark to have that subscribe button to bring you back to the channel. So this is a relatively new addition to YouTube and I would say add it. It needs you know a square ping graphic, maximum one megabyte, and you have to think about it in small terms like the logo of this one you can't quite read the words, but you see the big central graphic, and around it is just something. That's what it says over here, and it's larger elsewhere, but you see the main big graphic. And if this ends up in someone else's website, it has still the, the, um, the design for it to take you back. Yes? I enabled the monetization thing, mm -hmm. and it had me link an AdSense account, mm -hmm. and then I Yes, so it's relatively easy and usually they're pretty lenient about it. So uh, what, if you do go through the process of monetization, then within a week or so they can say if you're approved and then basically you know you can make some money out of your videos. It depends how popular the videos are, yes. Ten cents an hour. Channel advanced. A few other things to fill in here. Where, uh, where are you targeting your videos to? So I've got the wrong spot here, but I can put that in. Some more keywords for people to find my channel. Change the name of it. Change the graphic. These two are usually tied to your Google Plus, however. Yeah, I tried to change it right now, and it brought me over to Google Plus. I already changed it, but it hasn't populated. It hasn't populated it yet. Yeah. So eventually they'll link up together, especially if it's brand new. So you want the right place. Advertisements allow advertisements to display. It does not apply to videos that you monetize and videos that are claimed by a third party. So you're saying, would you like videos to be displayed or not? This is related to some degree to monetization. So if you want to turn ads off, you can't make money. Disable interspace ads. Again, if you, if you turn this stuff off, you won't be able to reap the most rewards of monetization. And if you do go through the process of monetization, it's going to ask you to link an AdWords account. Uh, you don't have an AdWords account, so it'll have you go through and create one. And it's relatively easy. It's all tied together to the same YouTube uh, Gmail account. It's all connected together. And so when you make money off of YouTube or AdWords and such, it's all in one central account allow my channel to appear in other channels? Yes, I don't really have any idea why you would want to turn that off. I want my video to show up, my financial video to show up after someone watches that Forbes video. So 
that's very useful to get more exposure to my channel. You can turn it off if maybe you want this to be private and you don't want those connections. Do not allow my channel to appear in others' recommendations. But you usually do want that on. Do you want to display the number of subscribers or not? Maybe as a beginner, with zero subscribers, you don't want to show off that you have no one paying attention to you. Maybe as you start to get more followers, 5 subscribers, 10, 15, 200, whatever, maybe then you want to show, because again, popularity be breeds popularity. And the opposite is, if you don't have any subscribers, people are going to see a big old zero there, and why would they subscribe? No one else is subscribing. So maybe as a beginner, don't show that you have no subscribers. As you get, you know, five of them, seven or whatever, then show it. And look at this. There's a spot here for me to attach Google Analytics. So that day when we talked about Google Analytics, remember I said we have an account and we have a property. I have my website property and I have a YouTube property. So I'd go back to Analytics, create a new property, call it YouTube, and it would give me the code. When you create a new property, I should grab my uh, tracking ID for You should create a site. different one. Really? Because it is it is a whole different domain. It might not be giving you the right data. It'll be mixing because I want to separate the traffic statistics and data that you that Google Analytics gives me for my home page and my YouTube. So I can create a different property for this Google page? For yeah. this YouTube page? Yeah. Oh, you can do it for Etsy and... Because you know how right now we're beginners, so we get this randomized kind of thing. Uh -huh. uh, this jargon thing. And then later on, once you're verified and you're cool, you can kind of create a custom. Oh, you mean the address? Yeah. Well, yeah, even with the even with the random address, you can still do this. You, then I just change it when that comes You would just... Um, you don't even have to change it, because even when you get the nice name... You know, eventually, when you get the nice name like you know VM Campos Jr., that's still underneath it, still that <coughs> unique ID. So Google translates that memorable name over to the one five eight nine X Y Z. So you don't even have to change that in Google Analytics; it'll still work internally. Yes. I didn't have another field for the for an email that was uh, almost a country. You probably verified yours. Yes. I haven't verified mine yet. Oh. Okay, but good point there. You after you verify, you might have one more link or one more box here about adding your official website. You do want to do that because then when you get to the part of adding cards and other more complex things, it you'll only be able to add links to websites that you verified. So if you haven't verified your website with YouTube, you're not going to be able to link your, your video to your website. So when we put, like, say it asks you for the link of your, your website, mm -hmm. should we bother to put, like, a UTM tracking code? Like, if this content is coming from a YouTube channel or something like that. Should if you want sure? even more, yes, if you want even more, you know, fine-grained data out of Google Analytics, it's always a good idea to get that specific. You don't need to, and it'll still give you a it'll good amount still, of data. It'll still uh, attribute the source. Yeah, and it'll still at the least say, you know, a YouTube link, yeah. and that sort of thing. But if you want it granular, then you could add an extra dimension there. Um, so... Let's do a quick pause here, and then let's exercise um, totally, totally randomly. Uh, yesterday was the was uh, the official start of the American Revolution, 1775, and let's practice a little democracy here. Um, we're obviously way past over our time. There's still more that we can talk about, but the class ends officially at 8:35. Now let's take a vote here. Would you like to push back the homework assignment one more week? so that we can have one more day on YouTube, because we're not done with all of these screens. Yes. We'll kind of do the voting in one moment. Before the option would. So we can either push back the homework one more week to have one more, one more week of lecture, or you know, we can end at this point, you can figure it out yourself, and the homework is due next week. So here we go, let's vote. Raise your hand if you want one more week of YouTube lecture, and then you'll have the homework in two weeks. 
two, three, four, five. Okay, that's probably the majority. How many would like then just, you know, this week we're done and then next week we're done? So, okay. So we'll stop at this point. Well, this, I like YouTube and there's a lot that we can still talk about it. So I think it might be a good idea to spend one more week on it. Looking at the schedule of the amount of classes we have left, we still have some padding to spend one more day on it if, if we want. And it looks like we want to. So, okay, the homework is not due next week. Don't worry about it. No, you won't get any extra credit if you turn it in early. We're going to have one more week of a YouTube lecture next time. Uh, and then we'll have the homework assignment. So now you might have actually two weeks to develop a great YouTube video. So they're, they're going to be cooler now. So I'm, I'm still not going to grade you very hard, but for your own personal grade. You get that back at google.com slash analytics. Any general questions and then we'll end. Uh, One general question about that. Mm -hmm. So where do I get my specific page, like my property? If I'm going to go make a property on analytics, where do I get that link from? So I, I make the right one. It is on it is on the admin screen. Adding it to it's in the JS tracking info. No, I'm not talking about on the analytics. I'm talking about on YouTube. Like, how do I get the link? The, you know what I'm saying? Because I'm going to create a property. They give you one. I think because uh, I saw it when when I went to like Google Plus, but I don't know if that was the Google Plus one or the YouTube one. You know what I mean? No. Where where do I get my my? Because that's it. YouTube advanced. You know okay, your address for your yeah. channel. You yeah. want to go back to dashboard, view channel, and there's your address. So just dashboard and then at the top, view channel. Oh, I see. So this is like the front side view. Okay, so that piece of garbage. <laughs> yep. <laughs> that's address. that's everyone's address. So that might be a good idea to mention it there. Uh, once you become a creator, you have many more screens to look at. But just to put everyone on the same track, if you go back to on the left side dashboard and then select view channel then you're gonna see the actual address to your to your YouTube channel and at the moment it's gonna be a gibberish address they recently changed it you used to be able to pick your nice short custom um, address like that you used to be able to pick that right away they changed it recently that now you need at least 100 followers 100 subscribers to get your nice short address so we're going to need to have this big address for the moment. Um, but if you go over to, for example, bit.ly.com, you can get a short address there. Uh, how do you do it? Again, we're out of time. But you go look at bit.ly, and what you can, put, you can do is put a long address in here, and it'll give you a short address that you can customize to some degree. bitly.com. So that's it for the moment. We'll have a little bit of lab time. When we come back next time, we'll talk about more YouTube, upload the video, talk about optimization, some other screens, and so forth. Try to use the channel a bit, come with questions, and when we come back next time, one more YouTube lecture. So no homework. Yeah, no homework yet.